G'day fellas, and welcome back to a casted game. We are here once again on Nomad. Oh my lord, we just had a double TC go down right there. And it looks like Don Artie has cancelled it out. We, we are starting off early, not even getting into introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Nomad. We're here once again, beginning to... Uh, looking forward to the event that's happening this weekend. Obviously, if you guys aren't familiar with it, I'll fill you in. There's a little bit of a nomad clash and nomadic clash happening, if you will. It'll be happening this weekend, hosted by Mr. Merlin. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can catch him, but he's got 32 of the world's best players going up against each other, including Crackity here, including Don Artie, two absolute titans of Age of Empires 4, both obviously Conqueror 3 Plus at the moment. I say Conqueror 3 Plus because, I mean, you can get to Conk 3, but can you get to Conk 3 1,900 points, 2,000 points? That's where these guys are at. So, we got two minutes until the treaty ends. Obviously, you don't want to build a town center right next to a, somebody else. But at the same time, you kind of want to put it in the corner, don't you? And take a look at the corners here. The corners, well, they're all filled in with mountains. It's a bit of an octagon. A little bit of an octagon. Now, we're not in the outback here, so I'm not going to claim... No, I'm not going to sue anybody. Let's just put it that way. But uh, we've got an octagon. And I'm, I'm liking the way that it's spawned in because it's still mega random. It's still an octagon. It's beautiful stuff. And let's talk about these starts right here. Look at this start coming out from Crackity here. And you know this one's going on the thumbnail, right? Like this is just absolutely beautiful when it comes to starts. He has got a town center that is immediately adjacent to every single resource. Gold, food, stone, and wood. Immediately adjacent. This is the dream spawn. I don't think you could get a better spawn than this in in any situation. And then, of course, he's got a large gold vein here. The only thing he's really lacking is space. Space is the only thing he's really missing out on. So he's going to have a tough time expanding. It's going to be imperative that he looks to do it. It's a nice little spot around the backside here. I guess if he does eventually crack down some of these trees, he'll be A-OK. -okay. But in the teal, on the southwest side, we will have Crackity here playing from the pocket. Over on that east side, playing as the Holy Roman Empire. Don Arty in the purple. He's going to open up with a prelate. Now, interestingly, Holy Roman Empire don't start with Prelate here. They actually start with just eight Vils. So you got to open up by going for a Prelate and then going for a Scout. Now, I'm, I'm confident that they would probably get the resources to offset that. At least I would hope that they do, but <laughs> I don't know if they do. You never know. Maybe, maybe Don had to gather a little bit of gold. I wasn't actually paying attention. We can see he's actually going to be housed right here. Don. Why, why is Don making a house with all of these villagers? What was the decision making behind that? Why does he need a second house right now? What was he what is he what was he doing? What 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 was that? I have no idea what that was. But anyway, the treaty's over. Prepare for bloodshed. Um I, I've got no clue what why Don just did that. Uh he, he used all of his bills to make a house that he didn't need to rush. Uh yeah, very strange. Now, when it comes to sacred sites, take a look at this. We got one, two, three, four sacred sites. Any Delhi enjoyers out there, rejoice. Uh, now, I will note that there is only four relics by the looks of it. So one relic, nice and safe down here. Another relic in the middle. Another relic in the middle. Looks like Don... Oh, I, don't worry. It's just it's just casual Drongo with his little bit of blindness mixed in. Uh, so we've got five relics here. Don does have a safe relic. And he's got plenty of space at the backside. Look at all this expansion positioning up here. Jeez, I get so excited when I see this as a Chinese player. I'm like, I want to put farms here. I want to live forever and just farm. That's what I want to do. But Crackity now going to be going up to the next age. Going to be going up, of course, with the economic wing. No real surprise there. Could look for trade at some point. There is a trade post up towards the north. It's also a trade post down towards the south. But they do spawn quite central on this map. I think the best trade you might have is something down here-ish. Trading up to here. But even then, it's probably not going to pull super numbers. You'd be lucky if it pulls 80, 90 gold. But now Don going to be throwing down an Arkan Chapel. And take a look at this. Don actually throwing this down. He's going to hit a wood line, gold mine, and the deer... No, he's not. No, he's not. He's going to hit the town center. The Arkan is going to hit the town center, the gold vein, and the wood line here. And he's going to push the deer in. Don playing it a little bit safer. A little bit smarter. Well done to Don. Now, let's talk a little bit about this matchup. Because remember, even though we're, we're kind of throwing everything out the window at the moment, you know, bathwater included, um, with the baby, all that good stuff. There's still a bit of relevance that comes in here. So the Abbasid typically going to consider be considered a pretty decent uh, matchup into this just because 
they can get away with the second town center. They can get away with a couple of cavalry units, a couple of, you know, camel archers, and then they can get over here. Cause a bit of havoc uh, in the base of the, of the Holy Roman Empire player. Don's obviously going to be looking for a castle age as soon as he can. He's got a number of options, but I think he's probably going to be focused on that Regnitz Cathedral, knowing that his opponent's probably going to be going for a second town center. And we do indeed see the Crackety is indeed looking for a second town center. He ages up, immediately researches fresh foodstuffs. No wheel barrow just yet for him. So going to be going with this new age build order where we've seen a lot of play players, a lot of players, a lot of players just not going for wheelbarrow super early. And I like it. I'm a big fan of it. I, I think that... Anyway, uh... <laughs> he's gathering the gold for the wheelbarrow, I think. Wait, did he, did he just cancel? No, he didn't cancel it. He's, uh... Anyway, so he's going for the wheelbarrow. Uh, but I, what I was going to say is I feel like wheelbarrow loses... It, it doesn't lose value. Like, obviously, the, the longer the game goes, the better wheelbarrow gets. And you want to get wheelbarrow. And the earlier you get it, the better for your villages. But I think the question is more, is it worth getting the wheelbarrow that early? Is it worth delaying the second town center? Is it worth delaying those 10 golden age structures, which you could be having at this point in the game. I mean, it, it's it's hard to say because the town centers have been built as well. So we're six minutes into the game, but really we're only probably like five minutes into the game, something like that. Maybe even less than that, maybe like four and a half minutes, something like that. Um, but you, you can routinely hit 10 buildings at the four minute 30 mark. But we do see the town center coming down now. Donati is still looking for that castle age. Gonna be dropping down an outpost just to defend any potential attacks here on the gold? It's a bit eerie when you don't have music. But fortunately, the music comes right in. Right on time. Right on schedule. Thank you very much, music team. You guys doing absolute work here. And Don being very fortunate with his position. But look at this. Crackity here spotting out what Don's plan was. And this is the consequence of not putting the Arkan closer. Because now, all of a sudden, Crackity's just having an absolute field day here. And we can see that if Don wants to collect this, he's going to have to drop a mill right on the edge here like that. And he's going to have to long distance gather. Oh, this is just... This is terrible. This is painful for Don. And he is going to push in one deer by the looks of it. But Crackety just having... Yeah, he, he's, he's going he's going crazy with it. He spots that last deer. He's going to throw that one down as well. So now for Don... Because the, the idea for him was... And, and we, we saw it. The initial plan was, I'm going to throw my Arkan here. And then he said, no, I'll bring it back here. And then I'll push my deer in. And that'll be better. Because that way my Arkan's safer. The only problem was, as soon as Crackety realized that, he said, well, you're not pushing anything, my friend. But I love the, cra the way that Crackety's gone into the middle of the map here. Moving forward rather than moving to the side. Looking to try and take space. We do see he's now looking to hit that, that 10 structure amount. He's up to 6 at the moment. That'll take him to, to 8. Jeez, that, that op opened up 8. So that'll be 9 and 10 coming in right now. No, that's 9 coming in. So he still needs one more. So he could probably throw in a lumber camp or something like that just right here. It's, it's never really a waste because you'll need it eventually. Survival Technique's also going to be coming through here. Is that for Crackity that we got Survival Techniques? It is indeed. So Crackity going for a bit more of an eco-focus. But Don about to click up. He's 350 food away from clicking up. And keep in mind, he's got plenty of vills here on the deer, which are going to be bringing in a lot of food very quickly. You can see right now, 35 food being dropped off here. So it's a huge amount of food that comes in with each one of these villages. They do have that extra carry capacity. I think it's 40% more resources. So that 25 really start to, starts to go up quite a bit. Take a look at this. We got relics being walled up. The 25 becomes 35 with wheelbarrow. I guess it would go to 42. So that's a, that's a lot of food when you think about it. And it is going to be a Burgrave Palace. And a very interesting position. Doesn't go for a forward Burgrave either. Just says, I'm going to I'm gonna play it on the backside here. And I do like this play from Don. I also find it interesting that Crackety has not opted for any kind of any kind of cavalry whatsoever in the opening. But I guess he hasn't really had time to squeeze it out just yet. I'm, I'm thinking more to that like GUA, GUA style where he goes for, you know, opens with cavalry and a camel archer, looks to harass... And then adds in the second town center. But obviously, Crackety just just rammed the town center down on the ground. Relic walled up almost completely. This one down in the backside should be safe. Other contested relic towards the north. And look at this. Crackety actually looking to try and wall out the southern relic. Smart move by Crackety. Burgrave about to come up though. Only seven villages on it. So Don's got a couple of options as to how he plays this. But I think obviously like the, the main focus is going to be men at arms. And we can see that already the response is coming from Crackety. And it's going to be camels. And remember that the camel does kill the men at arms very slowly. But it does kill them. 
So you can still overwhelm them just because you're going to need a lot of micro. And if you don't have enough camels to one shot, it does make it very hard. And the amount of camels that you need to one shot, it, it's quite high when you think about it, right? Like you're getting maybe eight damage, maybe six damage, depending on, on the upgrades. Uh, and as a result, it could mean that you need a lot of, uh, you need a lot of camels to one shot. Let's just put it that way. Up towards the north, the next relic going to be walled in. Don not in position to pick up any relics at this stage. Still only the one prelude out for the moment, but look at that. Eight men arms in queue. This is a man with a serious addiction to swords and shields. Hmm. Just having a drink at the moment. Uh, I will inform you guys, it is not energy drinks. I've actually moved on to uh, something a bit harder. Gone with water today. It's, it's not really water. That's a lie. It's not water. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say what it is. If I said what it is, you guys would ridicule me. You'd be like, Drongo. That's disgusting. I can't believe you're drinking it. So I'm just going to let you... I'm going to let you guys theorize what, what it is. What is Drongo drinking? That's that, that's going to be the game for you guys today. But uh, I, I suspect that none of you will get it right. Look at this. We got we got the, uh, the RGB lights on. Going on that wall. But now Crackety looking to wall up. Prevent any attacks from Dom. But obviously, he's got a couple of options as to how he plays this. Sacred Sites. Pretty favorable for Don, honestly. He can look to keep up. Like right here. Look to take Sacred Sites as well. It's going to be very hard, especially because one keep down here kind of defends both of these. As long as you've got a stone wall in between, you'll be fine. But now Don going to be pushing out. Camel's beginning to attack as well. Looking to try and hit that scout. And Don Hardy going to be on the offensive up to 15 men at arms at the moment. Now, remember that the Abbasid is in a very good position, but one of the, the mistakes that you can make as the Abbasid is even though you've got military production facilities, you're not making anything in the transition. So here... Crackety needs to be making more and more camels. Because if he, if he if these men at arms get through the base, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. You can see just how little the damage is. He slowly manages to take down one men at arms. Look at that. Look at the damage that, that comes off there. I think he's looking to try and pick it off. Anyway, the second wall does come up. Crackety holds on a little bit longer. The three camels are actually doing it. And Don, for whatever reason, decides to go his, uh, decides to go in another direction. Back towards the base of Don, though. He has added in a second prelate. So he is looking to pick up relics. We do see the first one's been picked up. Second one. I'm not sure whether he scouted out all of these relics. Don, notorious for his inability to scout. So Man at Arms going to be coming down and turning their attention towards this position. We'll open up another relic. We'll open the option for two more sacred sites as well. I'd, I'd love to see Don making more prelates, though. Maybe even dropping a monastery down. It's hard, though, because you can't really afford it all. We do see the prelate moving to the front line here. And so many men at arms. So many men at arms. 22 men at arms. So obviously the response from Crackety here is very obvious. He just goes straight into uh, crossbows. We see four archery rangers here. Only making crossbows. He's just got crossbows queued up. Uh, now where are those camels? The camels up towards the north. He could be looking to do damage with these camels. Uh, I think spring emplacements come through. No, it's only a, it's only a, uh, a an ar archer emplacement. Never feels good. But the crossbows are out already. Don, has he got his speed upgrade just yet? It looks like he might. Is the speed upgrade there or is it here? Okay, so he has got the speed upgrade. So Crossbow's going to be in a little bit of trouble. He's microing them all together. First Crossbow does go down. He's going to have more coming out though. Remember, he's got a whole bunch in queue. And he's just going to be careful because at this point, Crackety's just getting overwhelmed. Look at this, all the Crossbow's not paying attention. The consequence of having all of these units in your base and not really leading them away. I, I, I'm surprised that he didn't foresee the attack either coming in over from the east side of his base. But now Men at Arms going to be rampaging through the villagers, and we can see the village account really starting to dwindle. 11, 11 worker kills so far. He goes through onto the other side of the wall. He's looking to try and defend from that position. More crossbows coming out, though. He's got... He's got... This is the problem. He's got... <laughs> he's got enemy units everywhere at this point. The only place that he's safe is outside his own walls. The consequence of not foreseeing that his enemy would just push slightly to the east. I mean, we, we saw this one coming a mile away. Could have thrown three or four vills out on a wall over here. Buy yourself a bit of time. The men at arms, they would have been under pressure from the crossbows. It could have repaired the wall. He would have been absolutely fine. But I guess he was just focused on other things. The men at arms, meanwhile, just beating the living daylights out of all these crossbowmen. Look how slow they attack the crossbows. They, you know, they get hit four times in the face before they reload their 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 crossbow. Unfortunately. So now at this point, town center going to be under pressure. Village account. He's down 13, 13 killed. But the difference is only 10. And remember, there's going to be relics in play here. And Ark and Chapels. That's another factor to consider. It looks like the second relic has now been picked up. 
One of them has been taken for Crackity. But the crossbow numbers are looking decent. 11 crossbows. He doesn't want to lose this town center. He's trying his best to keep the town center alive, but you can see just how much damage. And the horseman going to be coming in now. I think he makes a bit of a fatal error there by not just going after the men at arms, but I think he would have lost the town center anyway. With the town center going down, Don Adi says, well, I don't actually mind losing these men at arms. You can take them or leave them. I don't mind. And it looks like he says he'll take them, but you can see that the struggle that he's got right now, that plus one having come through, it's going to make it extra hard. The plus two going to be happening as well. Sacred Sight getting taken to the wards of the north. It's only the second prelate though. And now the defense is on for Crackity. Needs to reestablish himself. Needs to try and get that wall up again. The consequence of going for walls so deep are that you have, you have a lot less time to react to the wall going down. But he did have... He did kind of... He got the warning, right? Like, uh, for me, it just seemed like a very easy response. You just take, you know, five wood villagers from here and just wall this position here very, very quickly. But Crackity decided against it. And he paid for it with 15, 15 workers. It was a fair amount of workers. He did a really good job in the on this northern fr flank. Managed to wall it in. Prevent that attack from coming through. But still. And now looking to rewall. Where does he go from here? He looks for another monk who's going to be attempting to take the sacred sites. Now, he can he can stay down here and defend, but the problem that he's got is he's spreading himself quite wide. You keep your, your crossbows here. Well, then what happens if the men at arms just go and run over here? Now, you've got to run all the way around. So, you've got to start thinking about throwing down gates here. Maybe a gate here. Maybe get another wall up across there. That way, you can use this as your, your, your uh, laneway. You don't have to worry about any potential attacks coming through, but... Don, beginning to move out. Look at the way he's looping around that top side. Sacred Sight captured on the south side. He'll get vision. Looks like the Men at Arms going to begin sieging down this wall in the north while the relics still sit safely inside. The Prelate moving into position for that Sacred Sight. But now we see a, a beautiful combination beginning to come out from Dawn. Lange Connect. Horseman. A deadly composition here. Crossbow numbers starting to increase. He's trying to take out... You can see how much damage crossbows do against that, those veteran horsemen. It feels like barely anything. 12 damage. And they've got plus two on top of their three base armor. So you're talking five armor. Only really doing seven damage a pop. It's really not a lot, is it? When you think about it, like, you're going to need 20 shots. More than 20 shots. 23 shots to actually kill that with the crossbow. Now, obviously, he doesn't have plus one just yet. Do we even have a blacksmith down from Crackety? We don't. At least it doesn't look like we do. So not even yet. And he actually uses the the, uh, the relic safety center as a bit of a box. And I like this play from him. But we now see Spearmen coming out. Spearmen are a good read here. The problem that he's going to have are those Lanch Connects. And now turning his attention towards that wall. We see the re-wall coming through straight away from Crackety. Very good reaction times this time. I'm not sure what happened on the last time. And you can see immediately the army is going to move from Don Adi over towards... A more advantageous position. The consequence of reacting so quickly is that your enemy is going to react with you. Crackety up nine villages at this point. He's got a lot of idols though. And now that men at arms number almost non-existent. Crossbows are going to be useless here. So it became almost a game of transitions. And Don doing a great job of transitioning. Horseman numbers pretty, pretty nice, pretty hefty. Keep in mind that the infantry does move faster. Holy Roman Empire infantry. It's got that little bit of a movement speed buff. You can see right here, 1.38 movement speed for the Spearman. Against this Spearman, if I can click it, there we go, of 1.25. Might seem like a small amount, but I assure you, it starts to add up. Now we might have a little bit of trouble right here as we enter into the cinematic mode as Don Artie begins to dive down on Crackity here. He's holding it for his dear life. The problem is there's absolutely nothing for these crossbows to shoot. Lanch Connect's going to absolutely rip through the front line. Spearman going to be going down. And with the Spearman going down, it's going to mean there's nothing to defend these crossbowmen. At the same time, we do see a Relic coming in over from the west side. Could look for a defensive one alone to keep himself alive a little bit longer. It's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to attempt to keep it alive one more time. Holds it off, but probably keeps himself, like, maybe he could have held it a little bit longer. I don't know. I always feel like you can commit to those a little bit la later. The, the earlier you do them, the worse it feels, because it just gives your enemy an option to, or an opportunity to run away. You kind of want them to make the decision to dive it. At least that's what I like to do. I like to, rather than use them preventatively, more as like, more of, more of gambles. Like, come on, you really want to do it? 
You really want to do it? How? What if? What if I've got two? What if I've got two monks standing by ready to heal this bad boy up? You can't kill him in time. So many different factors. Crackety, five villagers. Looking to throw down an outpost. I don't think Don sees it. He's just moving straight to the north. Manages to spot out the spearmen as they're transitioning through. Still no upgrades from the blacksmith just yet. Crackety, despite being the, the quality player that he is, has forgotten to get blacksmith upgrades this game. Don, on the other hand, sitting at plus two melee armor. Well, sorry, plus two melee attack. Plus two ranged armor. Villagers do manage to get out. Don't have their textiles just yet. They're going to be running for their life. What's that? Golden Age. I didn't even know that that came up as a buff. But now on the front line, it looks like in addition to those those camels, we've got spears that are coming out. The camels trying to hold on. They're going to have a tough time though. Just the, the, the lance connects are so difficult to deal with. It, it really makes you just want to go into kind of like an archer ball or something like that. Because how else do you deal with them? They just get on top of you. They kind of, in a sense, they remind me of uh, Musa Fadi Warriors because it's like on paper, crossbows should beat the Lanch Connects. But the fact that they just get on top of them so quickly, Lanch Connects are pretty good, yo. But now it looks like the crossbows might be exposed inside their box. They're trying their best to stay alive, but unfortunately, oh, he does a nice little, he tries to bring them through, but unfortunately, they all do go down and Don Arty manages to maintain control. At the same time, we've do, we do have the defensive advantage here for Crackety. So he's going to have those, the reinforcements coming through. Relic count at the moment is even. Two and two apiece. That one relic towards the north. Still open, still exposed. And somehow this game, despite Don's dominance, or his dominance. Oh, don't say that, Drongo. That just doesn't work. His dominance. <laughs> despite Don's dominance, uh... He's, he's still not feeling that far ahead, right? Like, okay, so he didn't go Regnitz Cathedral. He went Burgrave. What did he achieve with the Burgrave? Well, he managed to shut down a win condition for Crackety, which was to take out the town center. But once you get to the late game, you're still going to have a tough time against the Abbasid. I feel like Don needs to end this soon. If Don doesn't end this soon, he's going to be in trouble. So I think he's got two options. Number one, go Imp and look to end it with, you know, elite horsemen, elite spears, or try and finish it in Castle Age, but... I think you've got to start thinking about going for a keep, looking to try and drop that keep down on the landmarks and begin sniping. And knowing Donati, we might even see like a villager pull. I wouldn't be surprised for him to do something like that. Uh, he, he's the kind of guy that says, well, you know what? We're just going to bring everybody to the party. Now, remember against the Abbasid, you typically don't want to use units to siege down their House of Wisdom or, or their, uh, their buildings in general. Rather, you prefer to do it with siege. And that's simply because they get that extra fire armor. So it means that your torch damage is going to be lower by five. And remember that if you've got 50 units, then that's 250 damage uh, every every uh, round of torches that you throw. It's a lot of damage that they are able to soak up with that. But we do see that he's uh, managed to wall himself out once again. You know, we talked about it earlier, the fact he didn't really have space crackety. And now it really seems to be biting him in the butt. You can see how slow it takes now to, to siege down these houses with their extra fire armor. Horseman coming through. And we do see Don is going to be going for a keep drop. So this is definitely the right decision here. Don knows how to finish games. Let's just say that much. And he realizes that that there is a timer in this game. There is a window where he could potentially lose. A second town center has been added in by Crackety once again. But he falls back. Horseman numbers are looking good. Lance Connect numbers looking good as well. Crackety having a lot of trouble dealing with this combination. In, and you know what the crazy thing is? If you just go for a basic combination, I'm, I'm pretty confident you win. If you just go for spears and archers, I think you beat that combination. I'd have to double check my numbers, but I'm pretty sure that's that's what actually beats it. Because you, you can trade quite well into it. The front line is going to be the main issue that you've got, though. Lange Connect obviously just melt through everything. Like They've got so much damage. Do we have Trebs coming out just yet? Doesn't look like any siege. Don probably going to be moving to the front line. Looking to drop down a keep. And I suspect as soon as the keep goes down, he's got a beautiful spot right here next to the gold. If he wants to go for it, he'll throw down siege immediately after that. And we got healing centers actually coming through. Sorry, not healing centers. Medical centers coming through uh, for Crackety. So Crackety going to be thinking about doing the same thing. And I think Crackety probably realizes I need to just survive and keep is what I need. And it's interesting that we see keeps being such pivotal uh, Pivotal uh, unit structures, buildings. Don knowing that I need to drop a keep to kill him. He needs to drop a keep to survive. Kraken, he knows that. And the keep's going to go down. Town Center going to begin firing up at it. How long until we see those units move? 
Crackity, has he realized just yet? Now he's going to go through, comes through the back gate instead of going through the front one. Would have exposed himself had he done that. Needs to be careful, but at the same time, there's a lot of villagers making this this keep. There is no doubt in my mind that this goes up 100%. 22 villagers on that keep. And now, with the keep completed, it makes it almost impossible for Crackity to take this down without some sort of investment, heavy investment into Siege. It's just too strong. It's just too strong. Emergency repairs can always be thrown down as well. It can extend out the... Uh, it can extend out the radius, but we do see the first of the mangonels coming as well. Landmark number one, sitting at about 50% health for the moment. Crackity, going to be trying to try a defensive position to the, the north. Thank you very much, Crackity. Not the best spot. Even then, I would be I would be bringing it up more to the front, but you might have a bigger issue than that. And it's going to be siege. It's going to be that your base is under pressure. Now, Crackity, adding in a couple of knights as well. It looks like all of the all of the units here from Don might even be heading towards the north. It could be that, that Crackity's looking to try and cut off those reinforcements. Spearmen trying their best to get a nice little skewer in, moving around the back. And we do see him moving into archers, the correct play here. Moving into archers, beautiful little pocket that Crackity's got. He's holding on, but he's having a little bit of trouble. Needs to move the archers back. Can't let those lanch connects in. Needs to try and get a few more archers in here, but the numbers are just dwindling for him because of that keep. Look at the keep just firing down nonstop on these units, getting in so much range damage. And now Crackity in real trouble as these melee units just rampage through to the base. Don Artie, he's up more than a thousand points in score. That keep, while it might go up here, it's not going to mean anything because the landmarks are down here, buddy. This is the money. Don Artie, once again, looking for it. Expect to see a trebuchet rolling in shortly. He's obviously got the siege workshop already. And now the second landmark going to get focused down. Obviously realizing the closer landmark is a lot more of a threat. If you were to keep it alive and make this the last landmark, he, he just wants to make sure that it's almost guaranteed. And Crackity, he's going to try and defend. He's only got Spearman, but the Spearman alone will just lose for the Lanchkinex. And good game gets called. Crackity here going to be tapping out. Don Artie going to be successful. Fellas, go check out these creators. I'll leave links in the description to where you can watch them live. They'll be playing this weekend in Mr. Merlin's Nomadic Clash. Go check it out. $1,000 on the line. 32 of the world's best. I'll catch you guys in the next one.